hi guys welcome back to my channel if it's your first time here you are welcome so guys in today's video i'll be sharing with you guys how to cut a mermaid dress or a skirt with a tail at the back if that's something you're interested in keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so guys to achieve the mermaid skirt you're going to have a piece of paper that is enough to cut the waist the hip and the length so the line you are seeing now is the waist line so i'm going to mark from that waistline i'm going to mark 10 inches from that waistline which we serve as my hip line so what you see me doing now is marking out the hip line which is from my waistline to my hip line is 10 inches so what that's what you see me marking down so now that i have the hip line i'm going to measure 18 inches from my waistline so the 18 inches will serve as our knee length so for the knee length it won't get exactly to your knee it will be like two inches above your knee length because you want the figure to show very well so that's why i'm measuring 18 inches from my waist to my knee length so it can like give the dress a fitting or a skirt a proper fitting on after the hip you understand so that's what you see me marking down now i'm marking 18 inches from my waist to my knee length which is 18 inches so now that the waistline the hip line and the knee line is set we're going to work with the length so for the length of the dress or the skirt it depends if you are making a dress you need to subtract the bodies which is the half length measurement from the total length from the full length that's what you see me marking now the half length of the client is 15 inches that's what you see me i already subtracted the half length from the total length and so if you are making the skirt you don't need to subtract anything just place your tape measurement on the waistline or if you if, if the skirt is having a band you subtract your your band measurement from the total length and for the length it depends on the desired length you are working with if your clients want it as long as this my clients want it then you have to go all the way to the floor but if they want like a normal length you just work with the desired length or with what your client wants so now the next thing to do is to divide the waist measurement divided by four the hip measurement divided by four so what you see me doing now is i already divided the waist measurement divided by four that's what you see me marking down now and i also go to the hip line i divided by the, the hip measurement divided by four i also mark it down at the same time so to get the knee measurements you either measure what you have on the waistline you measure same thing on the knee line or you subtract one and a half inches from your hip measurement you subtract it so whatever you have is what we use for your knee measurement if the waist is very tiny then you subtract one and a half inches from the hip measurement or if the waist is not so different from the hip then you measure what you have on your waistline you measure same thing on your knee line then i use my covula to connect all the points together so after doing that i'm just going to mark from that knee line i'm just going to point like slant it back into my length like this just like what i just did right now i just landed use my i'm using my ruler now to connect the point together just like this so after that i'm just adding my allowance to it that's just what you see me doing right now i'm just adding allowance to it so now to get the mermaid effect i'm going to come down to the end to the end of the length of the dress like this just like what i'm doing now and now i'm going to divide just like mark like three and a half inches to four four inches to what i have i'm just going to mark it this is just me dividing what i have at the end of this length by four so i'm just going to mark it down like this just watch what i'm doing i hope you guys understand if you don't understand just watch what i'm doing so what i'm marking now is what i'm doing now is that i'm dividing what i have at the end of the length like this and then i'm just going to use my ruler to draw a straight line on each point that i divided 
just like this so this is what i have after connecting all the points together now i'm going to start cutting on each line but i won't cut exactly to the nail line i'm just going to leave about one inch to like half an inch so you see i did not cut exactly to the nail line i'm going to leave about like half an inch so i'm just going to come here like this and then i notch it like i cut it a bit on each side like this so that it can be easy for me to spread when i place them on the fabric so this is me cutting it just a little bit so you can see what i'm showing you guys right now so i'm just cutting it a little bit like slant is a little bit on towards the hand like this so i'm going to do this this on all the cuts that i just made now so guys this is what i have after cutting everything out so i'm going to transfer everything on this pattern paper i'm going to just use this pattern paper to cut it out on the actual fabric which i'm going to show you guys what it will look like and anything if there's anything you need to add to it i'm going to show you guys on the fabric so i'll be using this beaded sequence lace for the dress and also i'll be using the satin to lining the the lace at the same time so this is what i'm going to do i'm not going to cut on the lace please don't cut on the lace it's better to cut on the lining the pieces on the lining pieces and then you use the lining to cut the lace out after everything so this is me folding my satin and then i'll start placing I'll, i'm going to fold it properly and then i'll place my pattern paper on this lining so this is me placing my pattern paper on the fabric please remember to fold you are cutting on fold for the front piece so i'm sure you guys are wondering why i have so much allowance on the lining like this so i'm going to show you guys why there's a lot of allowance because remember for the mermaid effect you can't cut or join any pieces together so it's better you fold it in a way that there will be enough allowance by the time i spread the pieces we cut earlier like the the lines that we cut earlier so that there will be enough allowance for it by the time i spread the paper on the fabric so i'm going to allow you guys to watch what i'm doing right now and then i'll talk to you guys very soon <laughs> For the space in between the paper or the panel whatever we want to call it so i leave about two inches allowance each 
but if you want it to be very very wide i think this is wide enough to be sincere so i'm leaving about two two inches or two and a half inches maximum allowance in in between each paper you understand so that's what i just show you guys now and then i will start cutting them out remember i already added allowance to it so there is no need to add another allowance on the fabric so i'm just going to cut everything out now and then i'll show you guys after so after cutting the front piece i'm placing the front piece on the back piece and then i'm had i'm leaving about one inch allowance for the zip allowance so the one inches is for the zipper allowance and now what you see me marking now is the new length because we'll be working on it for the back piece after so i'm quickly marking the new length on the back piece so i don't forget what where it should be so that's what you see me marking out now so i'm just going to cut it out i didn't add any other allowance to the hip side of the bag because i already added allowance to the pattern when i was cutting it earlier the only allowance i added to the back was the zipper allowance which was on the center back now i'm adding to the length of the back because i'm going to be adding a tail to the back so that's why i'm going to add to the length of the back so i'm only adding to the length at the center back then i'm going to cut and slant it into the same length i cut as the front piece so that's just basically what i'm doing at the back and then i'm going to set aside the front piece while i walk on the back piece i hope you guys understand please just watch the video closely and plus by explanation i'm sure it's going to be much more helpful watch the video and then listen to my explanation very well so on this nail line that i have here i'm going to come there and mark one inch allowance so i'm going to mark my one inch allowance exactly on that nail line so i'm going to mark that down and then i'll go down and mark two inches you see on the nail line it was one inch and then i'm coming down as i'm coming down i'm increasing the inches so then i come down there towards the hand by two and a half inches or two inches and then i'm just going to come there that and then i cut it out the reason i'm going to do this is because the the tail that we are adding to the back part so it can sit properly it can fit in it can relax properly and it can give you that beautiful figure if you don't do this if you just add the tail to the dress like that it's not going to sit very well there won't be enough space for it to sit and relax very well so guys i already went ahead and cut the tail in a triangular shape it's just a normal tail that you cut in a triangular shape so for the length you're going to work with whatever length that you want whatever length that you desire and just make sure it's not so it can be as long as possible actually so now i'm going to set everything aside and then i will use my lining to cut the lace so you're going to cut exactly what you have on the lining you're going to cut same thing on the lace or whatever fabric that you are working with because i'm using i'm making sure that the lace and the lining is the same i don't want the lace or i don't want the dress to be transparent so i'm using same length for as my lining for the fabric as well so that's just basically how to cut a man-made uh, dress or a skirt so to join them together is very easy you just need to like join them the way you normally join your like your dress or your skirts or anything just place the lining on the lace stitch them together join them and then cut the lining as well make sure the lining is also long then you start joining them together i hope you guys find this video very helpful if you find it helpful don't forget to subscribe to the channel like comment and share and turn on a post notification so you get to know anytime i drop new videos thank you so much for watching till the end i'll see you guys in my next video bye